Come here, big boy. Woo. What is going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen, and I want to talk about the most important thing on a chatterbait or a bladed jig, and that is the trailer. We're going to dive into the details, so stay tuned. Like I said, a trailer can make or break the action on a chatterbait. It can make the difference between catching 100 fish a day and zeroing. I'm telling you, it really does make a difference. And that's kind of what I want to dive into. Now, to me, there's three different types of chatterbait trailers. And the first one I want to talk about is the one I tend to use the most and the one that, that covers more of the styles and the types of fishing I want to do with a chatterbait. And that first one is the type that has zero action. When I say zero action, I mean, if I took a trailer and I put it on just a jig head and threw it out in the water, and just swam it through the water, would the tail on it have a lot of action or no action? And these types have zero action. But the cool thing is, the least amount of action on the trail, on the tail, you get the most amount of action from the chatterbait. So your chatterbait, it's vibrating and it sends that vibration down the tail and that tail's just doing crazy stuff. And I love this style because it hunts. This is the style, and I'm going to talk about the different types of chatterbaits that I use, and I'm going to show some of them under the water, and or trailers that I use, and I'm going to show some of them under the water. But what these type of trailers do is they cause this bait, the chatterbait, to do to do crazy things. Like, like it'll be swimming along, all of a sudden it'll just dart, or it'll dart like this, or you speed up a little bit and it'll do this number. And, and if a fish is following it, that's going to trigger a mega strike, and I absolutely love it. But I want to talk about the the styles or the brands that I use for these uh, for this type of a trailer. All right, so the first one I'll talk about is, is one that's fairly new on the market, and that is the Z-Man Chatter Spike. Okay, and this one's really I mean this one's got a ton of action. And what I love I get about Z-Man baits with chatter baits is they last forever. I'm not constantly ripping off trailers and putting them back on but this one really makes it hunt it makes it kick to the side just a little bit sometimes you want a big kick sometimes you don't most of the time i just want it to, to erratically just kind of every once in a while kick out to the side as it's swimming and that's what this does and what i feel like that does because i've compared it to a lot of other trailers is i what causes this is is you get a bait with a flat side and a keel if you get one of the round ones, you don't really have that much action unless you change the tail on the round ones. And we're gonna go through some of those as well. But the Z-Man Chatter Spike is one that I use all the time. And then this one's a little different, the Yamamoto Zeko. Notice it's got a fork tail, but again, it's not a whole lot of action. And even the ones with fork tails, like the Fluke and the Super Fluke and that kind of stuff, they do the same thing. They cause with that flat side and with the uh, with the the zero action on the tail they'll cause that bait to do it now back in the day this the, the fluke it, which is the original it, it was one of those that you could just barely speed up and it would cause your chatterbait the original chatterbait to kick all over the place and that's when the love of, of trailers and changing trailers up really started with me but the yamamoto zeko the deal by berkeley is another one it's got a fork tail it's got a lot of action on that tail but there's nothing to cause that to you know nothing for the blade to cause the blade to steal the water from it so this cause this has a lot of action and this one right here i've been using for a minute it is the spunk shad by missile baits this one is dynamite um i can't wait to see what the chatter spike will do because it's a lot like this one but this one has been really really good to me over the last year year and a half i love this one so the spunk shad and all those other ones are the types that have very little action let's dive a little bit into those now, when I would use them, I use them to cover water. I use them when I want to keep the bait deep because there's a style that I go to when I want to keep it up. But say I want to get the most depth out of a chatterbait, I'm going to use those styles. Um, when the bass are a little bit in, in a funk and they don't, they're just following it, but they're not biting it, that's when I'll take it out and I'll start throwing it around and just kind of speeding up just a little bit as I'm reeling it in and it causes it to do that dart, that hunting action. But where I use it the most is I use it when I'm slow rolling. If you're on one of those lakes that has zero grass and everybody tells you, ah, oh, chatterbait's for grass lakes. No, it's not. It's for zero grass lakes as well. I, if I'm throwing it across a hard section of a point or I'm bringing it over some cover and structure, I throw it out, I let it sink to the bottom and I slow roll it. 
and that tr that tail gets the most action at the slowest speeds and it also helps keep that bait down it doesn't rise that bait off the bottom and that's what you want you want to be able to feel that blade but you want to feel that that bait hitting the bottom at the same time and those what are what make it possible it's one of the secrets i haven't been telling the guys at my local lake but anyway you, I love when when you can do that and and they'll hit that thing coming straight at you and you've got to catch up with them and set the hook it's a blast now the next style of chatterbait is the style that I use when I want to keep it up all right so when I want to keep the bait up off the bottom or if I'm if I'm running it really fast and I want it to to stabilize I don't want it to kick off to the side do loop-de-loops when I'm trolling behind the boat at three miles an hour when I'm, when I'm ripping it and popping it up and letting it fall back down, just when I get really, really aggressive with it and I don't want it to, to kick out a lot, I use a boot tail. And I've got several different types I've used. I've got a couple of them right here. I, I just love a boot tail for being able to keep that bait up off the bottom and, and keep it from reaching that maximum depth. But the ones I tend to use the most is this is a, a six cent swim bait. I can't remember the name of it, but I, like I said, I'm going to leave all of the links down in the description so you guys can see all these baits on Tackle Warehouse and get a closer look at them. But a six cent swim bait, and this is an X-Zone Swammers. The difference between these two, or it's a Swammer, I think is what they call it, is the size of the boot tail. Okay. This one's a little bit smaller. This one's a little bit bigger. And a lot of times I'll cut this one just a little bit to give me less lift if I need to. But what I do is the first thing you gotta you gotta do is when you rig it onto a chatter bait. Let me see if I've got one rigged right. Um, yes. Now this is a this is a Z-Man um, uh, minnows or something like that. It's a it's a Z-Man bait anyway. But you notice I have it I have it rigged upside down. Okay. Typically you would rig it this way with the hook coming out. Rig it upside down and you'll get the most action out of it and it will give you a little bit of lift but if you rig it right side up it'll give you the maximum amount of lift but you won't have a whole lot of action on the tail and that's what i do when i want to keep it up while i'm while i'm ripping it through grass and 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 basically trolling it behind the boat at maximum speed or if i'm if i'm cranking it really really fast if i'm burning it and i want it to come up over top of stuff that's the style that's the ones i use now the third style is what I use. You guys know a chatterbait, those who've fished it a while, know that a chatterbait gets hung in anything that resembles a brush pile, anything that resembles wood, in, in lily pads, in all kinds of stuff. And I hate it. I absolutely hate running it through, uh, through wood unless I change the trailer and make it work. And that style is kind of the cross, cross style, okay? This is a, a Chunky D from uh, from Missile Baits. And this one right here is a is a Komodo from Gambler. Now the Komodo can be a uh, one of the first style, which is the no, you know, the no action style, or it can be one that helps it get over top of wood. And the reason I say that is if you look at the bodies, they're skinny and they're wide. And you don't rig them like this, you rig them horizontal not vertical but horizontal and what that does is as that chatterbait comes over top of the brush that horizontal body prevents your chatterbait from rolling over and catching onto that brush and so that's what i use when i'm fishing around timber i use these flat bellied ones and just about any type of a trailer um, a sweet beaver style trailer will work just fine now i'm going to talk a little bit about the komodo the komodo is one Everybody throws a chatterbait down in Florida. This is where it started. And, and a gambler is down here in Florida, so they spend a lot of time on a chatterbait. This is one that if I wanted to change the profile of my bait, make it look like a bluegill, I would use this. And I would put it on the chatterbait that way. You know, hor uh, vertical, not horizontal. And it works great. Allows you to have that hunting action, and it looks fat and wide like a bluegill and it really, really works good. So be sure to check all the links down in the description, but like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing, introduce them to my channel, let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day.